Here I'm going to show you how to make a basic input form using macros and VBA in Excel. So here we have a lovely little form. You input your order into it, hit save, and it's going to take that and put it over here on the data worksheet. And I'm going to show you how to do everything you need to do to get this working for yourself. Now here we're talking about a basic form, but if you'd like a more advanced form with more features, you can check the link in the description for this video, and I've got a course on teachexcel.com that'll show you how to do all sorts of cool stuff. Deleting, updating, inserting, validating data, all sorts of things that you can do with forms in Excel. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. Before we go to the macro to get this form working, let's take a look at the form quickly and I'll show you how it was made. Let's open up the View tab and get grid lines, headings, and the formula bar back. And you can see it doesn't look so special now. So I have to say 90% of formatting a form is removing the grid lines and adding an extra row and column around the form and putting the border on the outside of that one. Beyond that, just do little formatting changes as you need. And the button here is a regular button. You attach the macro to it by right clicking it and going to assign the macro and select the macro from your workbook. The focus of this tutorial is not this form, so I'm not going to show you how to do anything else related to that, but there are a million other really cool things you can do that I show you in the course on Teach Excel that's linked in the description for the video. So let us get some of the formatting back and move on. I'm going to leave the formula bar there because it's going to help us and maybe actually the headings. So here is our form. You input the data. These are just regular cells. You can see here this is D4, D5, 6, 7, and 8. Down here we do have a little formula. Just multiplies quantity by price. But there's nothing else really special going on there. And the data tab where we're going to save everything, nothing really special going on here as well. We just have headers for the data. And that's it. I'm going to assume for your situation, you have headers for your data as well. So let us now get into the macro and see how everything works. We'll leave off with a form. Alt F11 to go to the VBA window. And you're going to want to open up module one. If you don't see it by default, go to view project explorer, open up modules, module one. And here we go. What I've got here is a macro that has a little bit more code than it needs to have. However, I wanted to make this macro as easy to understand as is possible for people who are not used to making macros. So there are some things you would do here a little differently when you get more advanced. And if you know that, then you probably don't need to be watching this tutorial. <laughs> so let's talk about the main things that we have to do here. First, we have to get the data to save. We get it in the macro. If we want to do anything with that data, we can do that here. Then we need to find the next empty row, or first we find the last row on the worksheet where the data will go. And then we use that last row to find the next empty row. Then we put the data in that worksheet. And then we go ahead and clear the form. And I have a little note down here, last cell in the form is a formula. So that's why I pointed that out before. It will matter in the code. All right, to change this to work for your data, what you first want to do is go to the section where we get the data in the macro and change this right here to the name of the worksheet with your form. It's input because the worksheet with the form is named input and the data worksheet is named data. So change that to the worksheet with the form and then you want to change this to where someone is inputting the data. So I have one line for each piece of data, and it's going to store that data inside of a variable. So if I want to add another field, I'm going to copy this, go down here, paste it in, change the name over here, input new value. Just make sure it's unique and there are no spaces or weird characters. This is the variable that's going to hold the value. Then change this to the correct worksheet if you need to and change this to the correct cell reference. So cell reference, just the cell here in the form. So this is D4, 
d5, 6, 7, and 8. So that's all you need to change to get the data for your form. Have as many or as few inputs as you'd like. Then once you've got the data, we are almost ready to store it, actually. So the next thing you need to do is to find the last row on the data worksheet. Down here, you only need to make sure two things are correct. The name of the worksheet where you're going to put the data and which column on that worksheet will always have a value. So if we go to the data worksheet, you can see I have data in columns A through E. And in this situation, let's say there will always be a value for A, but there might not always be a value for some of these other columns. So you want to count the number of the column, which one? A is 1, B is 2, C is 3. Just get the number, remember it, and put that number in right here. This is the number that references the column that will always have data. Now I have another variation of that up here. It's pretty much the same way. Make sure you have the worksheet name correct. But instead of a number, we have the column letter right here. Two different ways to do the same thing. That's all you need to change here if you want to use this one. Now we go to get the next empty row. I just put this step down here so it's a little bit easier conceptually to understand that. This is the last row that has data in it. This is the row that is the next empty row. All we do is add a 1 to that. So you don't have to change anything there. Now for saving the data, you have to change two things. The name of the worksheet where the data will go. Make sure that's the same. And you want to have the column where the data will go. So remember I told you column A is 1, B is 2, C is 3. So just update that here for the data that you want to save. And for every piece of data that you'd like to save, just copy one of these lines, go over here, paste it in, and make sure the worksheet's OK. Make sure the row's OK and the name of the variable. The name of the variable, this guy right here, comes from right here. So if you put a new item up here and give it a name, go down here and make sure you put a new line for it here. So you see input order, input order, and the one, two, three, four, five input order item price quantity total on the data tab order item price quantity total one, two, three, four, five. If you mess it up, you'll know pretty quickly when these guys are put in the wrong fields, basically. The last thing is to clear the form. You don't have to clear the form if you don't want to. All we do is reference each cell in the form and we clear it. So make sure you have the correct worksheet reference and the correct cell reference. And if you added a value up here and a value up here, you will need to add a value down here as well. And we just use clear contents to clear the contents. Now, since the last cell is a formula, we don't need to clear it. It will automatically update. So that's why I made a mention of that. Total automatically clears when the form clears because it's just a basic formula. So you don't need to clear that or you will actually remove the formula. Now, you don't have to have a formula in your form. I just wanted to show you that you can do that if you need to. So that's all you need to do to change it to work for your situation. And yes, you can make this macro more concise, but that makes it a little bit more difficult to work with if you're not used to working with macros. So the more advanced you get, the more you can change this. This right here is sort of the basic bare bones version that allows you to easily customize it and change it for your situation. And as I've mentioned, the course on Teach Excel shows you so many more advanced things that you can do with this. So if you're interested in that, check it out, link in the description. And now let's spend a little bit more time going over exactly what's happening. So I showed you what's going on here. We just create a bunch of variables and put the values in it. And all we're doing here is referencing the sheet and the range for the value and then dot value. Now the thing to note up here, dot value, it gets the value from the cell as you've seen. But we also use it down here for the input total where we want to get the value from the formula. So using dot value when there is a formula will get you what you see in the cell. So I see that in there, which is nothing. So nothing will be carried over, which in this case would be a zero. If you wanted to get the actual formula, you would use dot formula right here. And that would copy what's actually in the cell, not its output. 
but we do not want that, we just want the value. So that's one thing to note here. And I have a comment here that mentions that since we use dot value here, the cell output will copy, not the formula in the cell. Use dot formula if you want to get the formula. Easy peasy. Now here's where you could do everything that you want to do with these values. You can add validation checks, you can add duplication checks, make sure that this value doesn't already exist in the data worksheet. This is where you do all the stuff you want to do. Because if you don't actually want to check anything, then you don't need this step here. You can just put the values directly into the other worksheet here. There's no point to have these intermediary variables. After that, we use the very standard method to get the last row. Reference the sheet from which we'd like to get the last row. We're going to use cells. As I mentioned before, you could use range up here. Cells to get the last row. You want to point it to the column that has that will always have data in it. And then we use rows.count to count how many rows there are because previous versions of Excel don't have the same number of rows as the new ones or newer. So you use rows.count to count the number of rows. And then we use dot end Excel up, which says, hey, I want to go to the end of that range, then I'm going up, basically. That's kind of an easy way to think about it. And once we're here, we can do a lot of different things. We just want to return the row number. So we use the row property. This is a very standard setup right here. A lot of people use range because conceptually it's a little bit easier because you can see the column letter instead of having to learn the numbers. But this is a very standard setup for getting the last row of a data set. And down here, I just broke it out so you could see how to get the next empty row. However, whenever I do this, all I do is next empty row. I put that right there. I named that variable next empty row, and then I put a plus one after it. So when you get a little bit more advanced, you don't have to have all these intermediate steps. And then we just go down here and we save the data in the next empty row. So we reference the sheet where we're going to put the data. Then we reference the cell we'd like to reference. Which row would we like to reference? Well, the next empty row, which we just got right here, which came from adding one to the last row, which we got right here. Which column would we like it to be in? Well, the correct column for the value, and I explained how you get that already. And what do we want to change? The value of that cell. What do we want to make it? We want to make it whatever is stored in this variable. And down here, we just clear the form. So you reference the worksheet, then you reference the range or the cell to clear, and then type clear contents. You could also do it like this if you wanted. This is a very common way to do it. It's easy to remember. Dot value equals nothing. So it's up to you how you want to do that. And that's pretty much it. But there are so many other things you can do with this form, but it would take me forever to tell you. In fact, an entire course. <laughs> So if you would like to make a significantly much more advanced form, a much better layout in the worksheet where you can insert data, but not if it's a duplicate, you can update the data, you can delete the data, you can password protect the data entry and the data worksheet itself. You can do all sorts of cool stuff. Check out the course on teachexcel.com for that, and the link is in the description. So that's it for this tutorial, and I hope you found it helpful. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.